and welcome to Designs for Zen Restorative Gretzical Protein Yoga. To get started, just bring yourself and blankets and pillows. And I'm going to hop back here and show you how we can get started. If you haven't been here before, there's a recommended playlist down here in the chat. Honestly, anything slow or peaceful is good. Restorative yoga is all about being still and quiet, about relaxing and having fun, not about protein. All right. <laughs> Yeah, we'll do that in a future session. There's going to be two more Agatsuko yoga sessions. This one is pretty much just a joke because I have an amazing costume that I made because I love Agatsuko. <laughs> but for those of you that are here, you remember those things called body pillows? This is probably the best use you will ever have for your body pillow. Whether or not it's decorated, this is the time for it to shine. So grab your body pillows. If you have blocks or if you have a paper towel roll, these will work well to help with props. So blocks, blocks, <laughs> it's not Pokemon, blocks and paper towel rolls. And then if you have any kind of towel or blanket, pretty much the more stuffing the better for this. So let's get started. In restorative yoga, all you do is you make a little nest and you hang out there the whole time. So even though you had to wait a while for this, it's totally worth it. Take a block or a paper towel roll on the high setting and you stick them back at the edge of your mat or on the floor or on the carpet. Take another one. And so there's three settings, right? There's, there's tall, medium, and low. I know, right? You're going to do this on the medium setting. So you've got one tall, you've got one medium. Then you take your body pillow, multiple pillows, blankets, whatever stuffing you have, and you plop it on top. So you've made a ramp. The ramp is your friend. Adjust it however works for you. And as we get started here, minding your tail, you're going to just settle into our first restorative posture. So you're going to be leaning back just like you're on a tropical island. Your arms can be open. Your feet can be open. Find a place that works for you. Just relaxing on your ramp. As you do that, I'll talk a little bit about restorative yoga. Again, as you go through this, have music that works for you. It can be anything peaceful or quiet. Or you can have no sound. The idea of restorative yoga is that through the use of props, restorative yoga gives you the benefits of passive stretching. So while you may have been used to protein yoga, in which you're moving fast, building muscles, the idea behind this type of yoga is that in restorative, you're just listening to yourself and your body. So again, as you're leaning back on your ramp that you've built, finding that peace, start to come to relaxation and stillness. The point of restorative yoga is to focus on ease. That is no pain, no effort, just relaxation and rejuvenation. As you begin to relax in your pose, scan your body and start to see where it's tight. So as you're laying here, begin to focus on each part of your body and consciously let any stress go from your head between your eyes in your tongue in your mouth in your cheeks your whole face what can you let go through your 
throat, your shoulders. Make sure those arms are nice and floppy and your shoulders are rolled back and down but comfy. So wherever those blocks are for you, make sure it works for you. Also think about your waist and your back. There should be no pain in your back at this time. You should be fully relaxed. Feeling no tightness in your hips or your legs. Make sure your feet are flopping. If you need to take any movements anytime through restorative yoga, just like any other yoga, especially Riffwin Design's Bob Ross style yoga, you do what you need. And if laying here on this beautiful ramp is all you need tonight, then that's all you need to do. If you want to do more, you can do more with your own pace. Another point of restorative yoga is that it provides both the physical and the mental balance. So while I'm talking you through the introduction to restorative yoga, at times you may hear your own thoughts racing. Recognize that this is normal and that your mind has things to say that you must recognize as well. While restorative yoga aims to bring mental balance, recognize also that your thoughts can be anywhere from wild to completely still, from that raging storm to completely calm waters without a single ripple. But odds are you're somewhere in between where those ripples come and go and ebb and flow just like the wind, and that's okay. As you go through today's yoga, recognize that your thoughts are valid. Acknowledge whether they're good or bad. And if they're bad, just recognize them and let them go. Understand that we're all growing. And that whatever problems you may have, they'll be there when you come back in the next 40 minutes. And whatever problems you have, we are all here to back you, to make them less of a problem and to make them go away. But that any thoughts that come to you during this practice are just thoughts. Don't dwell. Acknowledge them and let them move on. As you go through restorative yoga practice, relax as much as you are comfortable. And if at any time it's too much, you are allowed to get up and start doing jumping jacks to find that protein need, because not everyone is made for restorative yoga. And if it's not for you, I recommend you try other different ways. But for now, as you're laying, on your back, on this ramp, or as you would say, thinking about the owl house, which you mentioned in our stream. Perhaps this is a king's throne or a queen's throne. Reclining. Begin to focus on your breathing, maybe placing your hands on your belly if your shoulders and your arms are comfortable. Take deep inhales in and out, focusing on your belly. Perhaps on the inhale, we try to even it out. Inhale for three, two, one. Exhale, three, two, one. Inhale, three. Two, one, exhale, three, two, and one. Continuing at your own pace. Hands on your belly. If at any time you need a big sigh, sigh it out. This is Bob Ross. 
Make it your beautiful forest, your beautiful happy trees. Find what you need tonight as we go through our restorative practice. And I'll give you a few more breaths here. Take one more big inhale. Before you begin to move your limbs, maybe rocking your ankles and wrists and head, finding gentle movement, just like you're waking up from savasana, corpse pose, the end of yoga. The good news is it's restorative. <laughs> this is all we do, guys. So slowly begin to introduce movement. And what you're going to do is you're going to kind of find a somewhat graceful way to roll off your castle. So kind of roll to your side and just kind of lounge on your side here. And you're going to take the blocks down from both sides. And we're going to do a side twist here. So again, these body pillows are, I mean, this is what they were made for, obviously, right? <laughs> So as you're laying here, maybe you need some blocks or a blanket or another pillow. Like if you have five pillows, you're, you're golden here. You're putting the pillow in front of you, and we're going to go into a side twist. So I'll demonstrate it this way just so you can see. You've knocked down your castle, and now you're going to put your hips kind of to the side facing your pillow. And you're going to lay down and just, like it's made for, stretch the body pillow keeping your arms tucked under and just curling over the pillow. So I'm going to flip over just in case you're looking at it. You see, like literally you're just taking your side to the pillow, hugging it in, getting your feet in, getting nice and cozy with your little pillow and finding any props if you need them. And you're just hugging the pillow in. This is literally yoga, guys. I'm serious. <laughs> so, snuggle that pillow. Give it a couple breaths here. And then the option you have is to take your snuggle. From here, you can take your arm that's on top, open it up to the other side, and begin to twist, rotating your back out and maybe looking over your opposite shoulder. So your legs and bottom arm are facing one way and your top arm and your head are facing the other direction. For a gentle, sp supported spinal twist, the goal if you're in the twist is to have your shoulders down. And if you need any additional support, extra pillows between your arms and legs, do that. Find what works for you. I'm actually going to adjust my camera so you can see me snuggling more. And I'm going to go get some more pillows. If you need to, while you're here, focus back on your breathing. When you inhale, focus on relaxing. And your exhale, maybe you twist a little more. Or maybe with each exhale, you let go a little more. The idea here is to acknowledge any thoughts that float by in the next few minutes. And I'll call you out of it on the other side. Just keep breathing.
as you're ready. We're going to do a flop to the other side. So if you're just cozy and want to hug those pillows and flop your whole body, feel free. Otherwise, find your way to flip your pillows to the other side. Gently, gently, gently finding your way. And we'll set our timer. And your idea again, you're scooching up to the side of it. And then you're draping your legs over it. Maybe you start just by hugging your pillow. And just relaxing into it. And if you like, your upper arm can reach up, extend it over, and you can look over your shoulder. Introducing that spinal twist. Breathing here. Again. On the inhale. Focus on the breath. On the exhale. Let go of anything else that you're holding in. Inhale to stretch. And exhale to deepen. And again, I'll call you out in another minute. Find the position here that works for you. Again, if any negative thoughts come through, just acknowledge them and let them continue on. This is your practice. You'll have six more breaths to relax in this pose. Again, maybe take a deep breath here as you begin to unwind. From here, we're going to roll onto your knees. So maybe you need to have a cushion or something underneath you. I like to put a blanket down for a little padding. So you're going to be on your knees. Now you've got a lot of options for what we're doing next. We're going to do lion pose, which is one of my favorites. So if you need a cushion, between the backs of your knees as you're sitting down to pad it a little bit, feel free to put a cushion between your legs. To start off with, as you've rolled up, gotten on your knees, feet together, knees a little wide. So this is one of the ways that you get into thunderbolt pose, but we're going into lion. So this is kind of where we begin our actual like yoga practice where you're going to place your hands between your legs, fingers pointing backwards, so you're getting a little stretch in your palms, and then roll your shoulders back and down. So really get that stretch in through your shoulders. And 
If you haven't experienced lion pose with me, this is gonna be like the ultimate version, right? So your arms are straight, shoulders back, rolled back, back and down. On an inhale, you breathe in, and exhale, you're breathing out with force. So I'll show you, you go in, and as you exhale, you stick your tongue out, you roll your eyes back, and you look like, like a real lion. So everybody can have a good laugh. We'll do one for laugh, one for real, and then another to really let go. So inhale deeply, exhale, inhale in for real this time. And nobody's watching. One last time, really let everything go. Inhale in, give it your lion. Good. And if you'd like to, you can come into it. Just a quick seated pose. Inhale your arms up. Exhale down. Inhale arms up. Exhale to center. And if you have any intention you would like to set for today's yoga practice, set it now. Or if not, I'll offer to go with surprises. Right now the world is crazy, and sometimes you just kind of go with it. And for those of you that are with me right now, again, we had some surprises getting started, and now we're fully zen. Again, no protein today, although you are welcome to continue to consume protein at your will. So with a big inhale, exhale, let's seal that practice. Good. Now we're going to go into our supported one leg forward fold. So you have options here. For some people sitting on a block on the lowest level, it is good or just a blanket. The idea is as you're sitting here, you want your hips to be at a good angle. So if you're like, have never done a really good forward fold and this works, go for it. Or if sitting on a blanket for a forward fold works or maybe fold it over. I like to fold it over. All we're going to be doing is sitting here. <laughs> wedging the blanket underneath us. You're going to take one leg straight, one leg bent. Inhale up and then fold over. But this is restorative. So you have the option of taking your pillows, your blankets, your bolsters, uh, your body pillow, right? Take your body pillow, fold it over and find something so that when you fold over, you have that support and you can snuggle it and not feel the stretch as much as just relaxing while one leg is straight and the other leg is bent. We're going to spend a couple minutes in this pose, so find what works for you in this bent leg forward fold. Again, focusing on your breathing here. Each exhale, finding anything else that you need to let go. And if at any time it feels like it's too much, back off. Maybe you need another pillow. It can literally be just sitting up with your neck bent down. No pain. Just relaxation. Find what you need in your restorative yoga. I'll spend one more minute here.
three more breaths. Find any last release that you need on this side. Whether that's rolling your neck, maybe finding any spot in your back or legs that you can just let go. Two more breaths. And then slowly take a deep breath in. Begin to roll yourself up. All we're doing here is switching sides. So whatever props you have in the middle, find a way to draw the opposite leg in and extend the opposite leg. Find the angle that works for you. Readjust your props and your pillows. Make a nice little ball and then flop over it the other way. And find what works for you on this side. Notice if it's any different. If there's any tightness in the small of your back. Maybe you need to bend your knee a little here. Or flex your toes a little. Maybe you do need that extra pillow on this side. Or perhaps you can fold more. And you adjust your props to allow deeper stretch on every exhale. Again, there should be no pain. Just observe your body. See where you hold your stress. And over the next minute, find out where you can let go. And if any thoughts float by, allow them to continue. They'll be there when you return. Just acknowledge those thoughts. And then focus again on your body and your breath on each inhale. And then release on the exhale. Find your ease in this pose. For six more breaths. On your last breath, maybe deepen it and slowly begin to inhale. And we're going to take that pillow on your paper towel roll and your everything, put it on the side. And we're going to do a seated cat cow. So again, maybe you want that extra fold underneath you or sitting on a block but here and I'll just turn so you can see it on an inhale you're folding over so just like we did and open up exhale fold over inhale open up focus on shining your chest forward Really focus on moving the upper sternum, exhaling, curving in, inhaling out, and do a couple more on your own. Maybe here your body's like, oh, 
and then it's to go in a circle. And then it's to go in a circle, give it a circle. Again, Bob Brawl style. You don't have to do anything I am telling you. You can just be still lay <laughs> laying in that incline if you want. All right. Okay, find some circles here. I don't actually do neck and shoulder rolls here, um, but if that's something you want in restorative, take a break and do some neck and shoulder rolls here too. What we're going to do next is uh, supported child's pose. So in normal yoga, normal, <laughs> I mean, this can be your normal yoga. There's no normal. It's whatever works for you. Child's pose is where your legs are wide. Your feet are together, just like we were doing before when we did the lion's breath. And you're sitting back, but we're going to do supported child's pose here. So again, find your blocks or your paper towel rolls or whatever it is that you want to use. Oops. And, um, and then any body pillows, pillows that you want. The idea here is that you're going to make a mini body pillow here. So that as you're on your child's pose, feet together legs wide you collapse over and you're hugging it in a way that you can still get this fold but that your head feels okay and that your, your body feels okay so maybe you need to have less in front or maybe you want more so for me that feels better maybe you want more cushion and more cushion is good for you and we're going to spend two minutes here in our supported child's pose Again, as you're folding over, find what works for you. Try not to squish the mic. And breathe here. Oop, there we go. And if you feel any tightness in your legs, you actually can put a blanket or a pillow between your legs and your feet. Maybe that feels better. Have fun with this. Find the angle and the props that work for you. Does it look like a puppy with 14 pillows that are holding me up here? Breathe and relax. I'll give you another minute here. Three more breaths here. Finding any last release. And slowly, what we're going to do here is crocodile. So all you do is you take the props underneath you. And you throw them to the side again. I know we're getting our upper body workout here. Maybe I'm going to take my blanket off to the side. Look <laughs> at this pile. i a pillow for it. Crocodile. If you do a little plank here and then you lower yourself down. And then you put your hands in front of you cross ways. And you just rush your, hand, uh, your head on your hands. That's it. 
So this one, you'll feel your pelvis and your hip bones touching the ground. If you want, again, you can put your head on a pillow. You don't have to. I would recommend only using props onto your head or your hips if your hips are sensitive. I really feel grounding here. I can come back to the breath. Feel how when you take those deep belly breaths that your whole body changes how it's touching the ground here. <sighs> Anytime you need that big exhale, just let it go. And if you ever need anything else, you can take your legs up, do a little windshield wiper side to side. Again, this is your practice. Take any movements you need to. And just come back to stillness as you can. We'll give you one more minute here. Again, letting any thoughts or maybe letting your mind find anywhere else you need to relax in crocodile. And I'll call you out in a minute. A few more breaths here. And if your head is turned to one side, maybe move your neck to the other side just for a few moments to get balance. Again, yoga, you want it to be both directions. Find your peace. All right, big breath in. And let it go. You're going to push yourself back up in your all fours on your tabletop here. I mean, who would have thought that that is yoga? You guys can stay there if you want. But if you're with me, one of the things I want to show you is step one. This is protein yoga. So we have to get you into shape to do the full Agretzico yoga later. So hands under shoulders, knees under hips, about hip distance apart. If you want to do more cat-cow here, which is like bending and looking up, and then looking the other way, feel free. But for me, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to introduce you into swan, which is like pigeon. So for this, you take one leg up, and then you're going to draw the knee in, and then you're going to stretch it forward. So this is where props come super in handy. So pause, grab your pillows and your blocks. And we're going to all fours. We take that leg back, we take it forward. And the idea here, and I'm going to do it facing you so you can see, is that as you take that knee forward, you're keeping it down and then just barely angling that foot in so that your hips can go wide. So as you're doing it from the side, it looks like this. But hips are not made equally. So you might rock back and forth and notice how your hips have usually a gap. So a great prop here is a block under your hip right there to keep your hips even facing forward, the knee facing forward, and your foot just gently, gently angled here like this. So in pigeon, generally they want your leg to be parallel out like this. In swan, it's bent in. 
So find one leg back, one leg forward, the knee bent, foot in. Maybe you find a prop here. Maybe you find some pillows or a prop in front of you. So this is seated or normal swan. Roll your shoulders back and down. Fingertips should touch. You can stay here, breathing through the chest. Or you can go to sleeping swan in which you walk forward. And you can rest on your forearms, kind of like sphinx. You can rest your head on your block at any level that works for you. Or you can rest all the way down, again, making sure those hips are square. So use the prop if you need to. And we'll give you another minute here to find what works for you in your swan or your sleeping swan. Or you can just sit and breathe. Again, Bob Ross rules, whatever works for you. Breathing and relaxing into your swan. <sighs> Again, if there's any pain, back off and find something else. Make it work for you. Couple more breaths here. And as you're ready, begin to walk up. Maybe moving that block over. Now you're gonna plant your hand here, take your foot back, stretch it out. Maybe you go into a child's pose here, you could do a down dog, you can do any stretch that feels good to you. Before we go, and we're going to do the other side. So again, get your props ready. And then as you're in your all fours, raise that opposite leg up, swinging it forward, just facing the knee forward. Foot is in just barely at an angle that works for your knee. Take that block, maybe sit it behind your hip so that your hips are facing forward. Stay here, or if it's available, you can have any props piled high to the sky to lean over and just stay here. Or you can find your way down into Sleeping Swan at a level that works for you on this side. Again, focus on your breathing. Scan your body and see how it feels on this side. Is there anywhere else that you need to release to welcome in that ease for our practice? And breathe. Find that peace. Make any adjustments you need to make this work for you. I will stay here for six more breaths.
And as you're ready, slowly begin to come back up to all fours. And knowing that this was step one of protein yoga, and you have to come back next week if you want to see how Retsuko actually does it. <laughs> so you're on all fours. You have an option here. If you really need to, feel free to do that supported child's pose again. And if not, we're going to take our time now to go onto our backs, because again, it is a little late. And this tail may not work here. So find your way onto your back. And what we're gonna do is our normal, keep your blocks by your sides, uh, lower down here. Gosh, I've got so many props. <laughs> lower down here. There you go. Inhale, knees, chest, and just give yourself a hug here. Maybe rock side to side. <sighs> if you need to, you can do happy baby or any spinal twists here. We're not going to do them tonight in this class. For a sort of yoga, as you come in, maybe give yourself one big hug, one tuck your chin in. And then plant your feet down. You have two options here. If you have a strap, this is like advanced, <laughs> advanced strap. You can put your strap into a loop and then stick the loop around your legs. So that way your legs only open up a little bit. So they're around your thighs. You don't need to do this, but it keeps them from flopping open. So we're going into bridge here. So if you have your strap, do your strap. If not, no big deal. Take your block or your pillow. Stick it under the small of your back. You have got options again. You've got your low, your medium, and your high. So as you're inhaling, lifting your hips, find the bridge that works for you. Not too high. Shoulder blade should be back and down under your body. Hands can be face up. If you want, you can lift them over your head. Find the bridge that calls to you. Oh, breathe. Oof, breathe into it. It can be as low or as high as you want today. We're going to be here for two minutes. Scan your body. As we're doing our first back bend, is there anything that feels tight that you can let go? Both physically and of course mentally. On the exhales, Focus on letting go. On the inhale, focus on drawing in energy. And as I give you the next six breaths for yourself, find your own ease in this pose. With your last breath, let go of anything else you have. And if you're in your bridge, take the block out from underneath you. We're going to go into our favorite here, our butterfly or our diamond pose. 
So if you have a towel or again a strap, you don't have to, but you can take it long ways and wrap it around your ankles so it's holding your ankles and really it's just a way to tie those ankles together so your ankles are now strapped in or else you can just hold them there it doesn't matter again your practice and then you just lay back with your legs now in a diamond shape and we're going to spend a couple minutes here with the hip opener again finding ease you have the option of having your hands out in front of you, or perhaps you make goalposts with your arms above you. Oh gosh, these blankets. <laughs> you have the option of making goalposts with your arms, or that you can go straight back, or my favorite in this pose, once you've got your legs all bound up, you're laying back, you got your diamond. If I make a diamond with my arms above my head, so check this out, right? Double diamond. <sighs> Lowering those shoulder blades back completely flat against the ground. And if you need it, you can also put blocks or pillows underneath your knees here. You want complete ease in this pose. So maybe blocks under your knees is what you need. Listen to your body. How can you find more ease in your butterfly? We'll give you one minute to find your own grace here. And if any thoughts come by, just go back to your breath for three more breaths. Again, from here, you can stay in this pose, or you have options. So we're going to do an uh, inversion. If you're okay with doing like a headstand or where you just draw your legs up, you can do that. We're going to have it. If you have a wall or a chair, I'll show you those. So let's start with a chair or a couch. If you happen to have a chair or a couch or a bed, I happen to have a chair. Okay. All you do is you lay down. And yeah, stick your legs up like this. Easy. Okay, that's legs on the chair. Same with couch, anything like that. If you have a wall, then do legs up the wall. If you're laying back, I'll show that one first. So if you're just on a mat, you can do a supported legs up. Or you have your hands here. Or if you do a full lift, you can hold yourself up here. But only do what works for you. And if you're on the wall, option again to put the blanket under the small of your back to give you a little bit more of a bend. You scooch up to the wall like side, like your side here, and then you just rotate so you don't have to scooch your butt too far. Legs up the wall. Arms can be out at a T. Feet can be flexed. You can bend your legs, find an angle that works for you. It could be up, straight, bent, wide. Really, it's whatever works for you. You can do it on a chair. You're going to find your personal way to invert. And we're going to stay here for a few minutes. And then we're going to do our Savasana. So, we've got another 10 minutes or so of yoga. 
<laughs> it's intense, right? For not being intense. So let's get into that now. Take your breath in and find your inversion. As we go into the last minute of our inversion, notice if there's anywhere else you can release. Maybe in your back or your legs. Maybe just deep in your breath. For the next few breaths, find what ease you need as you finish your inversion. And as we move forward into Savasana or Corpse Pose, you have the option to stay right here. If you want to stay with your legs on the couch or up the wall, stay there. Or if not, safely roll over and find your way into a resting. So in Savasana, traditionally it's just you lay on the ground. But this is restorative Savasana, so you can go back into the ramp we started with where you have the two blocks and the ramped pillow. You can put a blanket or a pillow underneath your head. You can put an eye pillow over your eyes. Uh, one that's highly recommended, again, taking your body pillow and using it under your legs to make a little ramp for your knees. Or you could stay up on the wall. Any of these poses will do. Find something that works for you as we go into your final resting pose. So we're going to spend five minutes in Savasana. So find your way down. 
Maybe you cover yourself with a blanket too, because it's going to get cool. Gently find your way into a place that works for you, where you can relax, breathe, and uh, enjoy any last benefits that will come from your restorative practice. So once you've made your cozy nest, begin to relax fully. Find the ease in the entirety of your pose. Focus again on relaxing through your forehead, between your eyes, your mouth and your jaw, release your tongue, oh, let your throat go. Maybe swallow or take a deep breath just to let any last tension melt away. Make sure your shoulders are rolled back and down. As your arms are flopping to the side, palms up to receive energy or palms down maybe to ground. Feel your belly rise and fall as you relax completely with your breath. Making sure your legs and your hips are relaxed. Adjusting anything you need in your bottom to fully allow your hips and behind to relax. And your legs should flop open your ankles should be loose, letting any tension in your knees and your ankles and your toes go. And with the next two minutes, I'll let you relax in silence. Remember, focus on your breathing. And if any thoughts come by, acknowledge them and then let them go. As you find ease in this final posture of our restorative practice. And I'll call you back on the other side. Stay where you are as I read one last thought. 
to conclude our yoga practice. As this is a Gatsuko protein yoga, speaking from the guru, for many of us, our yoga teacher fulfills the role of steadfast advocate as we take risks and try new things on the mat. In time, however, we must begin to be able to do this for ourselves. We must learn to trust that if we fall out of a posture or take a rest during a class or take a day off when we're tired, that we won't lose anyone's respect or affection, much less our own. Many of us expect more of ourselves than we would ever ask of anyone else. We simply cannot live up to our potential unless we're willing to live boldly and take adaptive risks. But if we're to continue to learn and grow, we must also know that at the end of each day, there will be a home to return to, where we will be loved for our hearts as well as our deeds. We must be steadfast in our love and respect for others and ourselves, both when we soar and when we stumble. In a Gretzico, Gretzico often says, if I've learned anything, it's that life doesn't go the way that you've expected. Yes, there are surprises, good and bad. Sometimes you fall on your face. But even when it's awkward, even if it hurts, you keep going. You keep moving forward. Because when you do, you're already a bit stronger than yesterday. Now, my friends, it's time for you to move forward as well. Begin to take gentle movements in your fingers and toes, wrists and ankles. Maybe take a deep breath in, filling your lungs and let it go. And then maybe take a full body stretch. The good news is you guys can go right to bed after this. You like this evening class? As you're ready, roll over onto one side. Staying on your side for just a moment. This in-between between waking and sleep. Movement and stillness. Take a deep breath in. And let it go. While this was not a vigorous yoga class, it was a yoga class nonetheless, and you have done your part. Begin to roll forward. Find your way into a seated position that's comfortable for you. You can keep your eyes closed or maybe present a gentle gaze. As you find your way into that seat, maybe roll your shoulders back again, finding any last movements you need to adjust. This has been restorative yoga, very gentle, very slow, and I hope it did give you that sense of ease. As always, this is your practice. To finish the practice, we're going to take a big inhale, raise your hands up above your head, exhale, draw them to heart center. We're going to honor yourself for being here on an inhale. Deep exhale, let it go. Once more time, inhale deep, let it all go. <sighs> Coming back to your intention. And maybe making a new intention as you go forward or holding on to this one. Take your thumb knuckles to your forehead. Another deep breath in and let it go. And I bow in thanks to you for practicing restorative aggressive protein yoga with me today. 
The teacher in me honors and thanks the teacher in all of you. I bow to you and thanks. And with the words of the yogis, namaste. Thank you all for joining me today. And again, I hope that you sleep well tonight. Take care, my friends.